A new season of Black Monday airs on Showtime. DJ Six Smith asked actor Andrew Rannells about the series and what to expect this season. What has this experience been like for you so far? Uh, it's been a real, a real wild ride. I was super uh, drawn to the show um, from the second that I read that first script because it's not only um, a really hilarious comedy with really hard jokes, which is not um, hard jokes, meaning like very clear jokes, like here's a joke, we're setting it up, um, which is not, uh, it, it, it feels like a very 80s throwback, which is really fun to get to do, but it's also incredibly serialized in a way that a lot of half hour comedies are not. And we always follow some sort of very sort of strict um, uh, plot line. And this year, season three is very exciting because uh, we get to do uh, a big murder mystery it's a high body count on Black Monday this year with a lot of very unexpected characters um, getting offed at very unexpected times. Um, so that was an additional um, challenge and, and a lot of fun to get to play this sort of clue-like mur murder mystery in addition to getting to do all of our very silly Black Monday uh, things that we usually get to do. And how nice is it just to be able to have some laughs given everything that's happened in the world the past year and a half, right? Just to be able to actually have a laugh for once in a while, right? Yeah, it felt really, really great to get back to the set and to get back to this cast. And um, as, as things started to shut down um, last year, last March, we were in the process of promoting our second season and had, you know, we had all of these interviews lined up and talk shows and all of that. And then obviously all of that went away. Um, so it feels, uh, it feels especially good right now to get back on the set and to get to be, you know, back in these crazy costumes with these people um now knowing we're we're getting closer to being on the other side of all of that you've played a lot of interesting characters in your day how would you describe blair and when do you feel like you really got a sense of who he is um blair in a lot of ways reminded me a lot of elder price which is the character i got to play in the book of mormon on broadway now 10 years ago uh and there was something really sort of naive and optimistic and um very earnest about him that i enjoyed but then we get to we got to take blair to some very dark places and blair's personality shifts um pretty drastically throughout the first season and then again all throughout the second season um and now in the third season we find him with a whole new uh career path he's a congressman um he finds himself sort of at the bottom rung of uh of congress and he's fighting his way to make a name for himself in that arena and um if things get things get pretty dark pretty quickly for old blair yeah <laughs> The 80s were a pretty wacky time. What stands out to you about doing a show set in this time in the 80s and early 90s? Well, the, it was such a time of, of insane excess. Um, so that, of course, is, is, is really fun to get to play with. Um, it's certainly a cautionary tale because it did not end very well for a lot of those people who were living very excessively in the 80s. But um, now being on the other side of that, it is fun to get to... Um, to get to at least, you know, pretend to be a part of that, that generation of, of huge excess. And these characters are all, you know, in, in many ways, larger than life and in, in their personal choices and uh, professional choices. Um, so as an actor, that's always fun to get to play somebody who, um, especially for Blair, who's sort of uh he's not i don't think that he's a bad guy i think he's very optimistic in that he thinks that he's he's making the right decision sometimes but it doesn't always take him to the best places so you've been on successful shows and then you get a little hamilton magic dust sprinkled on you when you slide in there i mean it's one thing to be doing book of mormon but hamilton you know bends the genre and it was such a smash at that point so what was the craziest wildest part of that experience for you um, the craziest part about that was when they asked me to, when Lynn asked me to, to join them, it was before they opened on Broadway. Um, they were just finishing their run at the public theater in New York. And I was on a waiting list to get tickets, uh, because it was so popular. No one could get in and to see it. And, and then I got this phone call that they were asking if after the show opened on Broadway, just a few weeks after, would I come and join them for about five weeks to fill in for Jonathan Groff. And um, I said, yeah, uh, without ever having seen it or heard anything, I was like, yeah, I think <laughs> that sounds like something I'd like to do. But do you think I could get tickets now? Is that something that I can 
can we maybe figure that out? Um, and they got me tickets. 